Você é pequeno. Big, big. Ah! That's oh, no. Jesus, she's wicked. I know says an ingredient. Something that didn't confine me. Oh, so sick. Oh. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if this is your first time here at Just Eat It. So today we are going to be having a story time. I'm actually very excited. See, I'm all smiles, okay? We are going to be having a story time while I do my hair. I'm going to do a bunch of knots. So I'm not going to explain how I'm doing my hair. If you're interested, just keep on watching um, because I'm telling the story and we don't want to interrupt the story, okay? Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> this story is how my mouth there, this mouth of mine legit caused my downfall like how my mouth almost killed me so you know what happened in secondary school you know one peaceful simple day you get i went to school like every other person and if you don't know me i like just i like to talk so okay then i was such an amable girl oh my god, oh my god. back to our story okay so one of my classmates then i think i was in ss2 I was a big girl. Big, big girl. I heard that you say that Hamalolo do, and I'm like, no. I was necessary. Well. Okay, I was not a big girl. As this one is a model class. If you don't know what a model means, a model is like suffering. Okay, the beginning of the soul brain. You get me? So my classmate, let's call her Binta. Binta comes and she starts telling us about one of our seniors. Uh, that senior was a prefect, and she was telling us how that she's a Lodo. She was still an acting prefect. She wasn't a prefect yet. So yes, I was in SS1 and she was in SS2. And so the senior I was talking about was in SS2. And I was in SS1 Agu and senior I was in SS2 Agu. So like, the difference between our classes is normal. Let's say this is SS1 Agu, this is SS2 Agu. A lot, it was a princess. And so she was telling us about this senior that, mm, that apparently that this senior, she's not intelligent, that she's very olodo, that she's supposed to be repeating, but, you know, because of all these bribe and all those rubbish things, that is why she is, you know, Transferred like Gaza, she's still going high, and now she's now being a prefect that she's not worthy of it. And I was like, If this wicked senior, you know, she doesn't have anything. I mean, I was excited because like she's really wicked, and uh uh, she was about to hold a permanent position. So, you know, when you feel like uh, you have your senior weakness and you want to tell everybody, <laughs> Mumumi, you know, is a woman? I was a mumu yeah. girl, <laughs> and I get to the hostel in the evening, oh, you know, in the afternoon after school, and I start to tell my roommates, Hmm, do you hear about this senior that ah. Uh, that she's a low do that she didn't know anything that they say they say oh of course it's not conclusive it's just that they give me now so i cannot say she's so i was like ah they told me that she is this and that and that and that she's this and you know and i was not telling them that ah so i do you know this senior that she's a do that, hmm, that me too i hate it today that eh. so that's what she used to do you understand so because she have money you get so because she have money and she you know know people now that's why she's not becoming a prefect and she just even and she's wicked i just know was wicked she's very wicked and still nothing there ahead mm. and so they you know told this story so one of my roommates unfortunately became a corporate with me and let's say her name is cynthia okay so i come now i come to the room i tell everybody the story i tell the people around the story and then this is how when it's time for evening food, that's in your house. I mean, I was wondering, why will that senior look for me? But why will she look for me? I was so confused. Ah, okay, I stepped in scared because I'm like, for this senior to call me, it probably means she has heard the story. And so when I came, she now asked me, okay, so I heard that you said that Hamamobo do, and I'm like, I'm me, sharp, sharp. I just threw the person who told me the story and I was like, I. No, it's been that I told me. Oh, it's been that I said. The man was like, ah, me, I don't know. Apparently, she had already called Binta said before she even called me. And Binta had already thrown me and took. Ah, I swear, secondary school, eh? Honestly, there is no loyalty there. Because because she was the one who told me the story, but she had already told the senior that I was the one who told her. I didn't know she had already denied it because, like, the senior just called me. And so I went to meet the senior and, and I told her that, ah, it was Binta that told me. So, she not said I should call the Binta when I called Binta. Binta was not telling me that she said I had no idea. But there was no way I could say I had no idea because I had already told her that Binta told me. So, there was no way that I could change my mouth. And as Binta is already denying anything that had to do with it, she had to keep on with her denial. If not, it would suffer. 
And so basically, I am the gum gum, the gum gum in the matter. Mm. So, you know what even made the story worse? I mean, at this point, one would think uh, this is a skit. <laughs> wow. Me and that senior were in the same hostel. We were both in the greenhouse, but the other girl was in the red, so she was kind of... There was really nothing that the senior could do to her except during the day, because at night, the girl was sleeping, Vita was sleeping in her hostel, okay? And only me and that senior was sleeping in my hostel. And so she was like, okay, we change the night. Come to my room. That was the beginning of my doom. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That was the beginning game. At night, I go to her room and then she tells me to call my other roommate, Cynthia. I didn't know why. And when I called Cynthia, I don't know how she actually linked Cynthia to it because Cynthia wasn't supposed to be a part of it, but she was a part of it. But mine was worse because oh, I, I was like the person that originated the story, which was so pathetic. So come to her room in the night. And at night, hmm, because she was like the house prefect or acting house prefect, rather, she had to count people into the hostel. And so we, the moment we enter inside the hostel like this, we are already kneeling down in front of her bunk. Hey, God. Every night. Mm. So we, what we used to do now, because she's a prefect and she have to count people. She used to let us go straight into our room, but we we'll beg, we'll go to our room, sharp, sharp, you know, lay our bed and do one or two before she comes. And so that's how we'll be able to get our things done sometimes. But there are some times, she's just very unfortunate. She will tell her roommates, hey, God, to see if they, if we came in immediately. Like, you don't see that kind of get there before. Hmm. She even, sometimes, she even used to tell us to enter inside there so that we stay there from the beginning day. It was bad. Like and that. sha, 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 sha. Do you know that this woman, or this senior rather, because she wasn't a woman then, told us to lie down under her bunk? Guys. I, as a human being, I, which it was sleeping under a senior's bed. We didn't actually spend the night there, but so that's like one hour. It was such a bad time for me. I was so frustrated. I was like, ah, human beings will stay in your wife. I don't know. You know, people were more privileged than the others. We can't deny. I wasn't the type of girl that had a school mother. Even when I had a school mother in Jesus one, I was so scared of her. I even ran away from her. So I never really had school mother up to like graduate. Yeah, so the other girl kind of manipulated her way and had her senior friends to actually beg on her behalf. So when we came, Cynthia didn't really have to do a lot of things. Like when we come now, she the senior step like point out all the anger on me and then she'll make me lie down under the bunk and like maybe Cynthia will kneel or to make it non obvious she'll make Cynthia you know go fetch water or something and then leave me lying under it became a personal you like SS1 is a model. SS1 is slavery. That's it. But I became her personal slave. Oh my god. This is her every day, every night. When I come back from school, I will add another report. And me, I didn't know how to report people because I just wasn't like, it just wasn't in my DNA. When you report a senior, you're just like, you're wasting your time. So the reporting wasn't an option. And that's how I was, you know, lying under this senior's bomb. And that other girl left. Guy. I was so scared, like that was such a trying point in my life, like I thought I was going to die of pneumonia, like I was so cold, like the weather was not pleasant every single day, like I kept on staying, I kept on lying out under her bum for over a week, ah, ah, that's in your Jesus, she's wicked, ah, panza panza, ah, ah, ordinary words, and it's not like that, she's not a road in fact, I've even, I've even, after maybe almost two weeks of actually making me lie down under the bunk every day, people started talking, people started complaining, and of course, they were like, you're going to lose your badge at this point, like, you may not actually end up getting this prefect ship, continue like this, it was already getting out of hand, and at some point, I was like, like, you know, there'll be a way that, me, I already said, it, I'm not a reporting kind of girl, but there'll be a point that you reach, and you know that, okay, at this juncture, I have to, you know, involve external people. She started making me, like, she now changed it too. Since she could not make me lie down under her bunk, in the afternoon, she will call me and I will kneel down there till it's time to leave. Like, after school, I should come to her bunk and I will kneel down there till it's time for, for us to leave the hostel. And then I'm just going to change so I didn't have room to wash because after school is the time that you come to the hostel, wash, have your bath, and go out for prep. For me, she will tell me I will get her food and after getting her food, I'll carry it to, so of course I obviously have to come, carry it to the hostel, kneel down by the side of her bunk till it's time to leave the hostel. And she was so inhuman because this is how I'll be there. And sometimes she will even tell me to wash her clothes 
I will wash her clothes for her and after washing her clothes for her, I'll have to spread them and she doesn't care if I have my bath. When everybody is leaving the hostel, she's still going to punish me. Like, if everybody is leaving the hostel and I don't leave early enough, she's still going to punish me. Even though she knew fully well that I had to actually wash her own clothes. She will not give me water, she will not give me more. She just give me clothes as if now I'm selling it. I was just so grateful to my roommate that time because at least my roommates were actually quite considerate and they were just helping me like helping me to wash my clothes because it was tough and so after doing this thing for almost a month and she realized that it was really getting out of hand and i was really ready to make sure that she would go down so it was like two weeks plus almost three weeks and she said calling me and said telling me you know you don't talk to people like that you get me the way she had it she was very pissed and upset like this is hard work that she put in her hard work and all those things and people just have misconceptions about her and you know people are always having misconception about her that she's wicked and she's this when in reality she just wants to rubbish lie nonsense and ingredients something that didn't confine me because she already see that ah uh, i was really ready to change it change my story into glory she now said telling me that I should not do it like that. that she's sorry. No, she didn't ever say she was sorry, but she was like, I should do it next time. And that I should go and be a good girl and all those things. And so that's how she now finally released me after after that period or more. After that period, I felt so sick. Oh my god. I was so sick. I had exams. It's only God that helped me during the exam time because I was sick, yeah. I honestly thought I was going to have pneumonia. But gratefully for me, I did not have my immune system was so strong. But lying on that was bumps showed me shaky. Uh, honestly, if you're in secondary school right now and you're being wicked, please don't. No one deserves it. You know, it did affect my self esteem in SS1. People know that they know how much these things affect people. What do they know about kind of because that thing you must stay up on a bunch of that and you must have my self esteem at that time. I felt really sad and dejected because I was like Let's focus on the hair for a while I want to make bangs with this I have a hair so in case I'm looking this side you know it's just one side So after spritzing the hair I'm going to start with palm rolling or finger rolling whatever and after I'm rolling it I'm just going to you know secure them to the side I want the bangs to be then I'm going to use bobby pins to hold the side and finally use a rubber band to secure it to a bantu knot also when i was doing this bantu knot if you looked at when i was making it i kind of placed the rubber bands twice it's advisable you do it just once because it ended up being too tight and i had a headache so i had to lose it and you know make it just once do whatever rocks your boat you know, I'd like to hear your experiences. Like, have you ever been bullied in secondary school? Have you have your mouth ever landed you into any trouble like okay. mine has? You know, engage with me in the comment section. I'm always there to chat with you and communicate with you until I come your way next time. It's just Uche.